football's ultimate 2021-22 awards including Christian Eriksen and Jake Daniels. It was a season that cemented a generational rivalry in English football. Pep Guardiola's Manchester City and Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool once again traded punches right to the very end as all other contenders lay flat on the canvas. Elsewhere, prodigal son Cristiano Ronaldo returned to Old Trafford and loved it so much he was caught laughing uncontrollably as a trouncing by Brighton, confirmed the United he'd left under Fergie had turned into a comedy club. Their failure to appoint serial winner Antonio Conte, a move almost as baffling as Everton hiring Rafa Benitez, was Spurs' gain, and it was good to see midfield legends from only few years ago balling from the dugout, Patrick Vieira at Crystal Palace, Steven Gerrard at Aston Villa and Frank Lampard at Everton. So, as we bid a final farewell to Roy Hodgson, Neil Warnock, Mike Dean and hopefully Mike Ashley, let's hand out the brickbats and bouquets for the 2021-22 season. The FA forcing Manchester City and Liverpool fans to travel to Wembley for an FA Cup semi-final on an Easter weekend, when they knew there were no trains, to take them there was a fine example of sick humour. Almost as sick as our scene Wenger selling his soul to FIFA, to tout for a World Cup every two years, when as a manager he'd have openly mocked such naked greed. But that couldn't match LGBT plus icon David Beckham taking £150 million off gay torturing Qatar to be their face of the World Cup then spouting garbage about how he strongly believes in the power of football to bridge differences. Sure, mate. Fans packing out stadiums after the longest absence since World War II was music to everyone's ears. As were the screams coming from PSG president Nasser al khalafi as he stormed the referee's room demanding to know why his team of mercenaries had been knocked out of the Champions League by Real Madrid. Jeff Stelling gave us all a lift when he announced a U-turn on leaving Sky's soccer Saturday and the deep outpourings of love for Marcelo Bielsa by the people of Leeds when he was sacked was a humbling testament to the power of football. But the sound of Blackpool's 17-year-old Jake Daniels announcing he was gay brought a wall of silence crashing down and made English football a more honest and healthier place. VAR's thicker lines meant fewer armpits were caught offside allowing fans to enjoy goals again with confidence. We had a spate of golden oldies shining in the twilight of their careers, Karim Benzema, Luka Modric, Robert Lewandowski, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Mike Ashley finally packed away the sport's direct signs at Newcastle and released Geordies from hell. But there was only one winner, Christian Eriksen playing football for Brentford seven months, after he almost died on the pitch with a smile on his face, that spread to everyone else's. The return of the mass use of Vuvuzelas as a backdrop to a boring Afghan tournament was a turn-off. The announcement that Burnley had sacked Sean Ditch in the middle of a relegation battle jarred as much as the squeaks from the revolving door in the Watford manager's office. Chelsea supporters chanting Roman Abramovich's name while Russian tanks were shelling Ukraine apartment blocks, and the ugly the rise in fans singing about deaths at football games were by some distance the worst. Steve Bruce jumping back on the managerial merry-go-round he said, was spinning him to an early grave, three months after picking up and pounds 8 million compo check from Newcastle, felt tacky. Fans of his old club holding up Saudi Arabian flags at Chelsea a day after the state carried out 81 executions, left a bad taste in the mouth that could not be sports washed away. But nothing was as sickening as the video showing Kurt Zauma slapping, then booting, his cat across the kitchen to a soundtrack of laughter. Although David Moyes being forced to defend West Ham's appalling Mealy Mouth stance was almost as nauseous. Bruno Gimmeries proved to be a catalyst for Newcastle as did Philip Coutinho at Aston Villa. Aaron Ramsdale improved Arsenal's defence, Dejan Kulusevski was a big upgrade on Lucas Maura for Spurs, and Michael Allies and Mark Gehi were inspired signings for Crystal Palace. And Mark Cucurella, Brighton unearthed another gem and Tino Livramento has been a revelation at Southampton. But few signings have made such a deep and rapid impact as Luis Diaz has at Liverpool forcing his way into one of the strongest attacks in Europe and giving them fresh impetus in their pursuit of four trophies. The rise of the celebration police, pundits and fans deriding other sets of players and supporters from wildly enjoying winning a football match left many cold as did kids and adults holding up bits of cardboard trying to emotionally blackmail a player into giving them his shirt. Players in sincere Twitter apologies for having a mare and tourist fans filming rival players celebrating goals against their team on their phones raised hackles. But nothing had fans pulling out what's left of their hair than referees' assistants taking longer and longer to raise their flags when players were yards offside. Neuro Mabasso's A. Marinho told the Italian media, I won't be looking for trouble. I am more solid emotionally, before being sent off for remonstrating with a referee, than taunting Juventus fans and questioning 
if a respected journalist had a brain. Jesse Marsh told us how he motivates players, I have hundreds of quotes I use at different moments. There are historical figures like Gandhi before Dan James took inspiration from the great pacifist by becoming the second Leeds player to be sent off for a violent challenge in three days. But the winner is a mate of mine who was asked by a St. Petersburg hotel if he'd cancelled a hotel room for the then-scheduled Champions League final due to personal reasons or other. He replied, other. Your president is a mad b. -dot.